I just write the stories, but it's coming from a from an origin in me that I either don't understand or prefer to keep to keep dark. It was debatable whether or not Madeline had fallen in love with Leonard the first moment she'd seen him. She hadn't even known him then, and so what she'd felt was only sexual attraction, not love. Even after they had gone out for coffee, she couldn't say that what she was feeling was anything more than infatuation. But ever since the night when they went back to Leonard's place after watching Amarcord and started fooling around, when Madeline found that instead of being turned off by physical stuff the way she often was with boys, instead of putting up with that or trying to overlook it, she'd spent the entire night worrying that she was turning Leonard off. I think to be a writer you first have to know how to write a, a sentence the way a musician has to learn how to play scales. Um, you have to just be able to make the right sounds before you can, can play an entire song. Plenty of people have ideas um, for, for long books, but they don't know how to write them because they don't actually know how to write a sentence. So I think you have to begin with language. You know, everyone starts with short stories. You have to learn how to write. So you have to learn how to write on the smallest level possible, really just the sentence. So if you have enough sentences together, maybe that will be a story. And once you've written some stories, you think maybe I can write a novel. I actually find that it's easier to write novels than, than short stories. Um, and I've had a very difficult time. I still have a difficult time writing short stories. Um, my mind is naturally suited for a long form. So even though I was learning to write and learning um, the different things I needed to write a novel with the stories, you know, they're kind of like training wheels on, on, a, on a bicycle for me. You have to learn with short stories to suggest a greater whole without, without describing it particularly. And that takes a certain amount of wisdom and restraint that I think um, only comes after many years of writing. So I'm, I'm, I keep going back to short stories to see if I'm able to do it. And it means leaving out a lot of things that I, that I actually enjoy putting in. And sometimes in a novel, putting those things in actually does bear fruit. So that's, that's I really consider myself a novelist and not a short story writer. Worrying that her body wasn't good enough or that her breath was bad from the Caesar salad she'd unwisely ordered at dinner. Worrying too about having suggested they order martinis because of the way Leonard had sarcastically said, sure, martinis. We can pretend we're Salinger characters. The book like Middlesex, at first I thought it would be a fairly short book, um, a fictional autobiography of an of a intersex person, someone born female who turns male. Um, but as I started to research the material and think about it more, you know, I, I discovered that certain genetic conditions um, caused this, 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 this state that the, the narrator would be in. And then when I started thinking about genetics, I started thinking about a whole family and a gene that goes down through different, you know, different generations of a family and that brought history in and then it finally brought in Asia Minor and, and lots of other, other things. So from one little idea, many, many other ideas came or attached itself to the original concept. And that's how my mind works. It always works through metaphorical connections between um, various things that at first seem dissimilar that, that, I, that I find an actual um, resemblance in. And then suddenly I have a very large, large narrative and large story to tell. I became interested in the idea of the marriage plot from, from reading novels that have a real marriage plot. My book does not. My, my book is not a Victorian novel. It's a contemporary novel. But the great story, the great plot of, of the, certainly the English novel, but the novel in general, um, is the marriage plot, a novel about a young woman in search of a husband, and she has a number of different suitors to choose from. Um, you know, it begins with, with Jane Austen, and those books are, are simpler in that really they just deal with, with finding a husband, and when, she, when the heroine finds a husband, the book, the book is over. But as the 19th century went, went along, novelists began to follow these women into their marriages, and you have much darker, more tragic novels like Anna Karenina, or, or Madame Bovary, um, where, you, where you see what happens in a marriage. And adultery, of course, you know, rears its head and becomes you know, central to the novel. So all of those books are some of the greatest novels um, that have ever been written. And you can't help um, but want to write one if, if you're a novelist. The problem is now that they're impossible to write because social conditions have changed so much that um, those plots no, no longer function. So I started thinking about all of this, and I thought, well, how can you write a marriage plot 
that's true to today, for today. Um, and what I realized was that you couldn't, but that those, those books, those forebears, um, you know, really still, still function in our minds and influence our behavior. We still have a lot of romantic dreams about marriage. People still get married and raise, and raise kids. And a lot of those novels um, are what give us these ideas of, 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 of who to become and, and, and that we can find our, our true love. After having had, as a consequence of all this anxiety, pretty much no sexual pleasure, despite the perfectly respectable session they'd put together, and after Leonard, like every guy, had immediately fallen asleep, leaving her to lie awake, stroking his head, and vaguely hoping she didn't get a urinary tract infection, Madeline asked herself if the fact that she'd just spent the whole night worrying wasn't, in fact, a surefire sign that she was falling in love. It was always hard, so I can't say it's become any harder. The time um, has become easier. When I was writing The Virgin Suicides, I had a, a full-time job, so that was difficult. Um, I had to write just at night and, and on, on the weekends, so I have a lot more time now. Um, it feels about the same in, in, in difficulty. Um, no easier, no, no harder. Um, I'd like it to become easier, you know. I, I think I'm old enough now. I, sh I should get one book that's that's easy. And I'm always hoping the next one will be that one that, you know, you, 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 you hear writers and they say that I wrote that in six months. I just, it was incredible. I don't know how that happened. I just wrote that one. And I'm always waiting for that to happen to me, but it hasn't happened so far. I do like to return or try to keep myself in the original conditions I had when I began writing. That is not being a professional, not thinking that I'm writing a novel anyone's going to read, not realizing I'm being paid for it, it's part of any kind of commercial industry. Um, just a, a young guy alone in his room who wants to write something because of the excitement of it. That's, those are the conditions that I try to um, pretend uh, exist around me. And moving to Berlin from New York helped me to pretend that that was the case because I didn't know anyone in the city, I was far away from everyone, and I felt once again like, like a writer starting out. So, that kind of anonymity and innocence and young excitement, which I think you still want to have even if you're, you're old and middle-aged. You still want to try to feel that way. And certainly after they'd spent the next three days at Leonard's place having sex and eating pizza, after she'd relaxed enough to be able to come at least once in a while and finally to stop worrying so much about having an orgasm because her hunger for Leonard was in some way satisfied by his satisfaction. I don't think it's, in, it's special to be, to be an artist or to be a writer. I think. I don't, th I don't think there's a separate cultural way to see the world. Obviously, we're trying to be, are trying to be close observers of what's going on in the world. But any, any idea of, any valorization of that, that it's, that it's special or a kind of priesthood, um, I, don't, I don't find to be the case at all. It's quite, quite just a professional fraternity more than it is any kind of priesthood, I think. You get pushed into that. Um, that role some, sometimes, and it happened to me more when I lived in when I lived in Berlin, um, and it was a more natural um, position. And once you're back in the States, they never ask your opinion. You know, we, we just ask, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio if we if we need something, some thorny issue solved, we'll ask a celebrity. They don't really ask the writers. So I certainly prefer them asking writers over celebrities. I think writers actually are better um, at discussing these things than celebrities. I just don't know if we're better than, than uh, anyone else. And I always, you know, that's one of the things I love about Europe and, and Germany in particular is the reverence um, the culture has for, for the writer. And, um, you know, I, when I see it over here, I'm, I'm happy and I, I agree with it in a way. But I find for myself um, that it's a separate, a separate identity to, to be the cultural commentator, to have the correct um, opinion about politics. It's not something that I ever feel um, I can do myself. So, it, you know, certain writers are able to do it, and I think that's, I think that's wonderful. But I don't think it goes with the job, particularly. Um, the job of the novelist is really just to understand lots of different people um, and, and perhaps not really understand the correct solution to every difficult political economic problem. A lot of it is, you know, is, is beyond what, what I can, can understand, I think after she'd allowed herself to sit naked on his gross couch and to walk to the bathroom knowing he was staring at her imperfect ass. 
to root for food in his disgusting refrigerator, to read the brilliant half-page of philosophy paper sticking up out of his typewriter. In some ways, you, you could say that it's already over, literature's already over, because um, it doesn't usually direct any kind of um, movement anymore in, in, in culture. So it's, it's, already, it's already over, so you don't have to worry about its demise. At the same time, oddly enough, um, there are all these readers out there. So it's, it's a strange contradiction where you, you feel as though um, literature is, is less important globally at the same time as it's, it seems to be um, surviving ex extremely well. Um, the moving picture didn't kill literature and television didn't kill it. The internet um, is the thing that could kill it more than, more than any other um, technological development. So it's the biggest threat so far, but we'll, we'll see. It's been many, many Cassandras have, have, uh, have come out and, and, and made dire predictions that haven't proven true. Um, so I'll still count myself among the optimistic, um, but guardedly optimistic. And to hear him pee with taurine force into the toilet bowl, certainly by the end of those three days, Madeline knew she was in love. <laughs>